Have you ever added an enum column to your SQL table and thought, nice, now I've got a clean list of values and no invalid data sneaking in? It feels like a good idea, but I don't think it is. In this video, I'll explain what an enum is, why it actually causes more problems than it solves, and what you should use instead. If you're learning SQL and database design, grab my free set of project guides on designing databases for a range of scenarios. It's linked in the description. It'll save you a lot of pain down the road. Let's take a look at enums and why they should stay out of your database. An enum is a special data type in some databases, like MySQL or PostgreSQL with extensions. It lets you define a column that only allows certain text values. Here's an example. We have an account table with three columns, ID, status, and created date. We want to restrict the status to only a few different values. We do this by declaring a type of enum and specifying the three values. Now, as of the time of recording, this data type is only available in MySQL and Postgres, but that may change. So the status column can only be one of those three values. Sounds great, right? No typos, no weird values sneaking in. But enums come with some pretty serious drawbacks. Let me show you five big problems with enums. Say your application grows and you need to add a new status like in progress. If you have an enum, you need to run alter table to modify the column. In MySQL, this rewrites the entire table. On large tables, this could lock up your database or slow things to a crawl. It could also be hard to deploy depending on your deployment processes. Enums look like strings, but they're actually stored as integers under the hood. So pending might be stored as 1, approved as 2, and cancelled as 3. That can break your expectations when sorting or filtering data. Also, if you accidentally reorder the list, your data will still store the old integers, but now they map to different text values. This can be a little confusing. If you ever migrate your database to another vendor, enums can cause trouble. Different databases handle enums in different ways, or not at all. With the preferred approach, which I'll show you shortly, everything is standard SQL. No special magic and no vendor lock-in. Now, migrating to a different database vendor is not something you do often, so maybe this point is not a valid one. Let's say your status values need more detail, like a color for your front-end app, or a display label, or an effective date range. If you use an enum, you're stuck. You can't add extra metadata. But with a different solution, that's easy to do. The last big problem is one of the main uses of these values. If you want to restrict the possible values to use in a column, it's likely you want to be able to show the available values in a list or a dropdown on a screen so a user can select them. With an enum, you can't do this as the list is part of the table definition. With a different solution, this is easy to do. So now we've learned about the reasons to avoid enums, what's the right way? Here's the better approach, and the one I use in every project. You use an integer foreign key and a separate lookup table. Let me show you what this looks like. Instead of using an enum, create a separate table. The table would look like this. This has an ID as the primary key and the name which stores the value such as in progress or pending or cancelled. It also has an example of some metadata, such as the sort order, which lets you define how you want to sort items in a drop-down list. This is optional, but may be helpful for you. Then, we replace the enum column in the account table with a status ID column, which is an int data type. This will also have a foreign key constraint, linking to the account status table. This is the kind of material and concepts I teach in my Effective Database Design course, which teaches you how to create a well-designed database from scratch and write SQL to create it. Check out the link in the description. So why is this approach better? You can add new status values by inserting data into this account status table. You don't need to change the schema. You can implement this functionality to admin users who can make this change without any deployment of the application. You can include information that helps with displaying this value, such as sort order, colors, or anything else you need. It's also easy to join to the table and get a friendly name, which means you can show a value of active instead of a status of one. This approach is much more flexible, easier to manage, and portable across systems. In my Doctor Clinic database design video, I use lookup tables for things like gender and appointment status instead of enums. A patient's gender might be displayed as male or female or other, but stored as an ID that references the lookup. 
The same thing can be said for appointment status. Scheduled, cancelled, completed. Each one is a row in a status table. This lets us add more detail later like display colors or sort orders. It also keeps our data normalized, clean, and easy to change. So are enums ever a good choice? Honestly, rarely. Maybe for a binary choice like yes or no, but even then I would recommend using boolean or tinyint. Enums seem helpful at first, but they almost always create problems later. Avoid them and use a proper relational structure with a lookup table instead. If you want to see a realistic design that uses lookup tables, check out the Doctor Clinic database design I showed earlier. You can watch that video here. Thanks for watching.